Hi guys, Frost Fangs here, welcome back once again, of course, to another Paladins video. We're going to be playing some Octavia today based around her Q. I have obviously made a bunch of videos already on normal Octavia, so if you want to see me talk about that side of her, then definitely check the other videos out. Today's one is going to be a bit of an off-meta setup and one that I haven't actually played with yet, but on the PTS server I said I'd eventually make a video on it, which is what I'm doing now. We're going to be playing with Asymmetric Warfare, which turns your Distortion Field into an actual damage and healing ability. That is on top of what it already does, of course, which is block, vision, and then slow, and we have a set up to a combo with it. I have changed my normal setups for her a little bit since the last video because I think I've got a, like near level 10 now somewhere around there so they have been changed a little bit but they're still mostly the same. Just been playing around with the damage reduction on the air for I'm not sure if this is final so I'm not really going to be talking about that in this one. We're going to be playing with this instead which is a bunch of cooldown reduction on the Q and also a bunch of extra radius and the most interesting thing for me and kind of the reason why I wanted to make this video is Dominant Dome at 4% level seems like a bit of a crappy card but in game it makes a really really big difference even though I haven't played with this in a match because I wanted to be a first impressions I tested a ton in the target practice and like I usually do just to kind of put the loadouts together and having this card at level 5 with the 20% increase actually makes your Q seem nearly twice as big as it usually is you'll see as we jump into a match we then have just cooldown reduction and cooldown reduction when we use the F then a bit of extra health and a bit of extra ammo for the passive we'll grab the cooldown reduction one just so we can spam it even more and we'll grab max chrono so we can actually throw our Q out nearly every 10 seconds technically it's even less than that because it goes on cooldown when you throw it not when it actually deactivates so it's more like 5 or 6 seconds and they can't even destroy it either so you really are throwing it out quite a lot but obviously you're dedicating an entire set up and your items and your passive and everything to it so you know it makes sense of it to be this way also because i think i forgot to mention it in the intro going to be sticking to onslaught and king of the hill for this just because it makes the most sense we've got much archives for this one we've got tiberius a cassia genos and a mave then for their side they've got a coca and makoa of course another octavia a charlin and a furia so a bit more of a normal team we're actually missing a tank here but should be fine so we'll grab the cooldown passive and then the asymmetric warfare talent and we'll go for the q setup and just to show you how crazy big the q is here you can see kind of the initial size it usually isn't with the extra radius here it's actually pretty massive currently it's got 13 seconds with chronos one so when we have it maxed out it'll be around 10 seconds it lasts for four so it is like a six or seven second cooldown on it for the towns we've got prayer to instincts luminary street justice impulse then next match warfare as well commander shield half shell recurve dragon fangs and exterminate not what i was expecting but hey sure we'll throw the q just there definitely expecting it to take me a little second here to get used to octavia again but there goes there octavia nice we'll pop the f kind of get a bit of an angle here on the koga if my accuracy just doesn't suck it's gone just trying to dodge the shawl in throughout some little suppressing fire little self heal there keeping my ass alive but let me be the percentage is wrong because with 20 i feel like it should not be this large just about dodge that we're gonna retreat a little bit here throw some taps over there for the makoe went through his shield seems like he actually healed for 100 a tick by the way i didn't really mention it in the intro but it's something i noticed on the target practice as well just out of the koga on like two health okay just finished him off fair enough yeah it takes 400 i don't think i mentioned it in the intro i actually kind of forgot yeah for whatever reason it says it takes 475 every half second but it seems to actually tick for 100 every half second so maybe they buffed it and they just didn't put that anywhere or maybe i missed it but it still says 75 on the taunt anyway so either way it is kind of wrong there goes the furia we'll throw the q there for the mave pretty good demonstration there on the huge radius for the q we'll just jump over there goes the mako obviously they're in this there as well which is really really nice couple of taps there for the mako that's the beam definitely still ticks for 125 but for some reason it heals for a little bit more that's the fury again for the ult she's actually we finished her off. See if we can get rid of their Octavia. I'm actually going to run around here and just see if I can hit fire up. There we go. That works out great. We'll throw the Q. Shotgun's up there. He got rid of the Tiberius. He's just like on two health here. I'm just trying to track him. I have no idea where he is there. We'll stop in the air. I guess he's just here. There's some hit fire shots. We'll throw the Q. Tick damage might do it for me. I guess we can just hit fire him. That works too. Hello, Maka. I'm going to hit fire you. Bad idea. Probably should just scope him, but whatever. We're going to run. Get more taps. There goes the Octavia. Thought that was the Fury for some reason. She's actually quite low there as well. Damage buff from the Genos has been really nice. We'll go for the ult. Not really that strong of an ability without the Tarn buffing out but we did still get a little bit of damage there pop in the air there goes the fury we are now full chrono so it is a pretty much 10 second ability trying to get rid of the fury gonna f away throw the q just here charlotte's probably gonna attack me i'm gonna fire some shots actually somehow still up just dodge the beam just honestly trying to take cover as best as i can here i'm gonna f over this way throw the q down get some shots on the mako he's pulling up the shield and gonna hook me i'm dead okay yeah we're now maxed out on cooldown reduction so it's about 10 seconds and we can pull it down whenever we use the f as well there's some taps for the enemy octavia get absolutely battered there we'll yunk some more quarter rise charlotte just throwing a little cheeky shot over should try and get rid of the octavia really because we're the only one who can see it there's a bunch of headshots for the mako and some good damage we're going to throw the ultimate just there that is the generals with the ult hello charlin thank you for the free kill we'll drop the q here that should take them a little bit under it as well hello octavia there's some shots to just try and hit her feet constantly i don't even aim for headshots there's an f for a bit of cooldown reset is she going around the side yes we'll throw the q to give some cover and some heals we'll go through that mako shield and finish him off if we can hello, octavia you're still going in here trying to do your best i'm missing so many of these goddamn shots i deserved was i there i was going left right left right i missed like half of them throw the q just there in the corner is that going to be in range to take them i guess it is kind of i don't think it's going to get you a crazy amount of damage because it is 125 but it is a nice little bit of extra pressure on it the q there to finish off the fury i don't think i'd take it over the one that obviously well i guess technically just got as a kill but i don't think i'd take it over the one that buffs the ultimate out I feel like that's overall a bit of a 
a better talent. We got rid of the Charlene. Might as well go ahead and throw the ultimate as well. Seems like it does stop on shields, which is interesting. Did take the Makoro a little bit there. Seems like he's pushing up kind of weirdly. That's the Genos with the thing, but he's going for the ult. We're going to try and burst him. Never mind, that's the Furia. But I'm just dead. That damage is mental. 395 to 200. They deserve the win. I think overall they dominated the objective. I actually don't know if we had a Mave or not, though, because she was playing kind of weird. Whenever I was spectating her there, she was doing the weird wiggle the bots kind of do, as you saw right there at the last play. But I guess we'll see with the stats. I don't think I did too badly there. 39, 70k, 6k. I'm fine with that. I definitely could have done better. I think with the other setup for Octavia, I would have had an easier time there, but it didn't work too badly. Then for the rest of the stats, Atai Bruce had a bit of a hard time. Didn't do too bad though. Our Maeve was playing very strange. Full 15, 22k is pretty damn rough. The generals did fine, and Cassie also struggled quite a bit there. Koa did a good job. He played the objective a ton. Fury also did pretty decent. Charlene, Octavia, and Coco also all did fine. Not really much I could add at the end of that one. I feel like that match kind of spoke for itself. All right, well, for game two, we've got the same thing. King of the Hill match at Zarko. We've got a Cassie, we've got a Sky the and a Genos. Very similar team comp there as well. And we're up against an Andrew, a Victor, a Rock, and a Nara, and a Dredge. Another very similar matchup to what we had against on the other side. So yeah, we'll just go for the same thing. Feel like it worked fine in that first match, and we have pretty much a repeat here. We'll start off with Kronos, then we'll get Quarter Rise going because I feel like I should have done that a little bit earlier in that last one. For the rest of the turns, we've got Luminary, Eminent Smoke, and Dagger. Big game. Okay, big game's kind of interesting. Tremor, Spirit, Stone, Main, Scuttle, Curse Revolver, and then Cardio. I'm just going to go run straight towards the middle, throw the Q there, and then just see if anyone's going to run around. Dredge is already spamming. That is the Anara with the wall. We're going to go for the F just so we get the cooldown off of the Q. Little tap over there on the Andrew. I'm just going to drop the Q straight onto the objective so the Anara has a bit of a harder time holding it, although she's still just going to tank that 125. The damage really isn't very strong. Once you add in the fact that it's also like a vision block and a bit of a slow, and it also gives you a heal, I feel like it does turn into a pretty damn good ability. The damage on its own, though, like I said, 125 really isn't that much. Throw a Q just there again for the Anara. Get some little taps on her on the side. Frame rate is dipping massively. She's throwing up the wall. Guess this is the plan. There's some more shots for him. We'll throw the Q there. Dredge is pushing in. It's kind of hard to see people with the effect on the Q. I don't think that's intentional, but it might be. It's a weird side effect to it. Throw the Q just here. I guess we might as well go ahead and throw the ultimate. Hello, Victor. There's some tap suits to avoid the nade. It doesn't even matter. Not really much point in me doing that. Hip fire is weak as hell. Might as well scope in at point blank range and try and pull something off like that instead. She's going to wall for me. She's kind of saved my ass there again. There's a last little tap on her. See if we can finish off the Grockies and the Ghost Walk. There's one last little tap. Finished off our Kronos. Definitely shouldn't be a priority, but I'm doing it for the sake of the video, of course. There's some more taps over there for her. Might as well throw the Q just so that they can't really see us properly. That's the Anara ultimate. Okay, just tap over there for the Grok a little bit. We'll pop the F over here. Also get the Q on cooldown a little bit faster. There we go. We got rid of the Grok. Did get a nice bit of self-heal from that. More taps into her. There's an F. We'll reposition. We'll throw the Q again. Genuinely feel like this is the inverse of the match we just played. It's like the exact same thing, just I'm on the other side where we're actually winning and holding the objective instead of yeah, obviously the inverse. We'll throw the ultimate. See if we can get anything with that. There's a tap on a few of them, I guess. A bunch of damage numbers. There's an F. Gonna push in here to get some hip fire stuff. I don't know if they're Andrews even here or not. They are very grouped. Jones with the ultimate. Got rid of the dredge. Nice. I think Leanne's gonna get rid of the Grok here as well. She's probably doing the best on our side. Meanwhile, Sky's just kind of waddling around. Fair enough. We'll throw the Q under. That should reach over a little bit. Dredge also just spawned. Thank you for the free kill. I don't even know what that was, but we're ticking a bunch of them up top. One thing that I do kind of miss because I think I'm kind of used to playing Sky is being able to put like a movement speed buff on the invis thing. I feel like a heal and damage and all the other stuff it has is probably enough, but a movement speed buff would be an interesting thing to add on to it. Don't really feel like dueling with her, but most of the time she doesn't even really want to fight me. She kind of just wants to wall instead. There's a Q that should tick the Anara through the wall, which is a nice kind of thing that it can do. She's gone. There's an F. It's going to kind of hover over here. We'll just get some shots. There's a Q, little hip fire or two. I think I'm fine here. Yeah, the team's with me. There's not really going to be an issue. Hello, Dredge. Stop in the air. There we go. He is gone. My accuracy was absolute trash. There's the Q. Get some shots on the Grok. We just about won that fight. I feel like I probably should have died. We're actually doubling their score. Again, this is like a repeat of game one, just inverted. We'll tap over there for Eric, and I'm going to have a decent damage stat this time around. Probably a little bit more healing as well. Grok is doing pretty good on their side. Pretty juicy headshot there. She should be gone. Don't know why I'm playing so cheeky. There's a Q. Bit of a heal there for the Leanne as well. There goes the Andro. There goes the Victor. Leanne is shredding in this one. That Dredge. I don't know who you just got rid of. I think it was Sky. We're going to reload in. There goes the Victor as well. We yunk some more nimble. I feel like that makes her quite a bit easier to play. We're just going to glide here on the top for a second. I don't think they're even running around. Genuinely is the exact same match, just the other way around. Dredge used the right, so it didn't detonate on our face, and he is gone. Pretty juicy kill there. We'll throw the Q down for the self heal. Seems like their Victor's actually DC'd as well, so this is technically a little bit worse because they seem to have like two people who just aren't here. Yeah, it's Andrew and Victor. Neither of them are playing because they're just running and doing the things the bots do. And there we go. There is the victory. Very similar match to game one, although they had two DC, so it was a little bit more uneven. 14 to 24, 74k, 6k. I'm fine with that. As I expected, Ali and Shredded there, 38 to 400k, although he wasn't very modest about it. Akasi didn't do particularly good, but she didn't do terribly there either. Generals did a great job, and Sky also did fine. For their side, Grok did fine. Their Victor played pretty damn weird, though. So did their Dredge, so did their Andrew, and their Anara. Kind of played the objective and balled herself off a little bit. Really, it just
again. This is the third match without a tank and the tank on their side. Hopefully this won't be a little bit more different though because this video hasn't been as challenging or as different as I was expecting it to be. It's actually been pretty standard. I feel like it's actually been somewhat successful, which isn't really what I was expecting, but I guess I can't really complain. We'll go ahead and grab our cooldown set. We'll start off with, I guess, Cordos this time around just to mix it up a little bit and we'll go for Nimble as well because I don't feel like maxing out Cronus makes the most sense. We've got Spilling Ice, Curse of Over Resonance and Booby Trap. Then for their side, Sand Trap, Mortal Reach, Raw Subject's Guillotine and then Slug Shot. We're going to throw the Q straight off the bat. This is a TDM. Don't know why I thought there would be an objective there, but we are taking quite a few of them. Just going to try and dodge the Shaolin to make sure I don't eat a bunch of damage for free. Okay, never mind. I still took that K plus to the face. Radius on that is pretty damn big. There goes the Ceres. Ash kind of pushed in a little bit there. She's going for the knockback. Just going to get point blank range shots. Tried to F, but I'm already dead. Cronus 1 might as well. It's only 300 credits. There's the Q. Get some little taps on Shaolin. I think like that extra 125 plus the heal just gives you so much of a freaking advantage when you're like dueling with somebody. Obviously, if you threaten like a team setting, it's also going to be super good, but just in like a one on one, the tick damage plus the heal really does add up. We'll throw the ult just there. Might as well. They're all pretty grouped. They're going to be able to dodge it, but might as well just lob it. Look, actually taking quite a bit there. We got rid of the Ceres. That is a bunch of them. Just going to dip over here, use the F for the cooldown reduction. We'll drop the Q again. Overall, got to say the talent is pretty solid. It buffs the Q out a hell of a lot and maybe something that I'd actually recommend. Don't know if I'd recommend the specific loadout for it because that might be a little bit excessive and I do really like the bonus speed you can get. The actual talent itself though, turning it into like a heal and a damage is actually pretty solid and the extra radius cut is also really, really nice. Is the money going for you. I'm going to push in here through the Q down. I think it's also kind of a nice thing that the damage is like only 125 because people don't get out of the way of the Q. They actually kind of sit in it, which overall will actually quite a bit more damage because it's not taking them for like a lot. So it kind of just kills them slowly and they don't really notice. But I did get thrown off the map there by the Ash, by the way. So props to her for that play at least. She's really, really low. But she finished her. Well done, Vivium. There goes the BK as well. Hello, Ceres. There's an F. Don't really know what the hell I was trying to do there, but there is a Q for a little bit of self heal stuff. I guess we'll yank some more quarter eyes. There goes the Zin. Well done, Andrew. Little tap there on the Ash. I'm going to just throw the ultimate and dodge that stun. Throw the Q as well. It's also kind of interesting to throw the Q down just to make people think you're in there, even if you're not, because people waste abilities and stuff. I'm going to wait to throw the Q and then we'll use the F for the cooldown. We'll stop kind of in the air. There goes the BK. Nice. Okay, we'll just drop back down. That's the stun. Thought I wasn't going to be in range. Thought I was going to be around the corner, but it doesn't even matter. Zin's pushing in. He's gone. We'll drop the Q down. There goes the Shaolin. He's actually dead. Well done, Andro. Pop the F. Go over the side. We'll drop the right click. Hello, Zinni's just going to go ahead and ult me. I guess I'll die. Ash went for the ult. Got rid of the Vivian. There goes the BK, though. Like I said, that damage really does add up after you tick him for a little while. So it's still like nothing. There we go. She's out. I got to say, the thing that I really do like about the Q is the fact they just kind of ignore shields and walls and stuff. So you just tick people even when they're not really expecting to be able to take any sort of damage, and it works out quite nicely. Don't know what my plan is. I'm waiting for my Q to come off cooldown so I can actually duel with him a little bit easier. We'll drop it just there. Now we've got a bit of an advantage from the heal and also the tick damage on him, and he's gone. I feel like I maybe would have died without that. I'm going to try and retreat. I'm expecting to get tapped with a Charlene. He nearly hit my ass right there. Taps onto the Sarah. She's actually gone. We managed to finish her off. Stop in the air with the right click. There goes the BK. Drop the Q. 39 to 21. We managed to pull an even bigger lead there. Somehow we kind of shredded them there for like the last 10 minutes. There goes the Zin and there is the victory. More like three minutes of shredding them or a minute or something because, because we didn't have that big of a lead and then it turned into like a double. But yeah, overall, I feel like I did really well there. Actually 12, 3, 63K, 7K. Again, really happy with that. I really wasn't expecting to recommend this Octavia setup and I don't think I would for beginners, but after you played it for a while and you're comfortable with it definitely give this a go because it is good fun it is quite a bit different to our other sort of one but anyway for the rest of the stats our ying did fine our andrew did fine our vivian did as well and amani shredded for their side charlene did pretty good the ash had a bit of a hard time although she did shield for quite a bit bk also did pretty average and their sin struggled quite a bit and their service was actually healing for a ton 74k is quite a bit there so yeah there we go that was octavia based around her distortion field or asymmetric warfare octavia none of them are that catchy i guess i could just call it bubble octavia i don't know why i'm a title of this video to be honest but it's actually been pretty fun to play with don't think i've really got anything else to add here at the end so i'll just cut the video thank you for watching but if like if you enjoyed of course let me know what you want to see me do next i'll see you guys all very very soon and as always stay frost there